What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell. Today we are taping at the historic Lincoln Building right here in the 18th and Vine District. Today's special guest is currently running for Kansas City School Board election. She is one of four at-large candidates seeking two available at-large seats. If elected, she will serve a five-year term. Ladies and gentlemen, please us welcome Ms. Patty Mansour to our program today. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here today. Ms. Mansour, can you tell us why you are seeking election to the Kansas City, Missouri Public School District School Board? Yes. Um, I'm seeking election to the Kansas City Public Schools because I'm a Kansas City Public Schools parent. My husband and I have three children, and all three of our children have attended the Kansas City Public Schools. That's awesome. Um, I believe in public education. I'm a product of public education. Uh, I think public education in this city is one of the big challenges that Kansas Cityans haven't yet resolved. We've tackled a lot of things in this city and it's a wonderful community to live in, but um, our, our district is still one of the big areas where many Kansas Cityans are troubled. So I would like to bring my parent experience, uh, my professional non nonprofit background, and my passion for public education to this, to this issue. Mrs. Mansour, can you tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up? Sure. Um, I grew up outside of the St. Louis area, have lived there most of my life, um, went to the University of Missouri-Columbia, majored in journalism there, um, started out as a, as a journalist, as a reporter. In 1987, my husband uh, uh, had, was... Did you, did, excuse me, did you work for a newspaper or a... a Television station, or I did. I worked for the Arkansas Democrat in Little Rock, Arkansas, That's interesting. and the uh, Memphis Press Seminar in Memphis, Tennessee. My husband was a journalist for many, many years, and we moved to Kansas City in 1987, and he took a position as a reporter at the Kansas City Star, and that's what brought us to Kansas City. He grew up in in, in Kansas City, but I had not. Um, although this feels like home to me, and I love this city. Uh, when we moved to Kansas City and it, we were ready to buy our first home, we decided we wanted to buy a house in Kansas City. And not long after that, we made the decision that we would send our first child to the Kansas City Public Schools. That was 19 years ago to now, and so it's been 19 years. I've been an active parent in the district. Three children, two have already graduated from the Kansas City Public Schools, and one still in the school system today. That's a noble decision, Ms. Mansour. Can you tell us what you do professionally? Yes. Um, I am the communications director for a health foundation in Kansas City. Uh, I've worked in for nonprofits in Kansas City for the whole time that I've lived in, in Kansas City. Uh, I did uh, grant writing and alumni relations at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. I worked for the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation for almost nine years as a communications officer. Worked as an independent communications and grant writing consultant for a few years. And then for six years now, I've been with a health philanthropy, the REACH Healthcare Foundation. What kind of civic activities and community programs are you also involved in? Well, I'm through my work at, in philanthropy and, and also through my work as a public school, my efforts as a public school parent, I've been very involved in this city. Um, I have been uh, an active parent leader in a number of schools. I've served as PTA president and as a school advisory committee president and chair at multiple schools. I've participated in community forums on public education. I was one of the, um, a small group of facilitators who led a strategic planning process for the Kansas City Public Schools back in 2009, 2010. There were six community people selected to lead that strategic planning process. That process ultimately took about 18 months and involved almost 400 Kansas Cityans. Wow, wow, mm -hmm. that sounds very involved. Mm -hmm. For the next five minutes, Ms. Mansour, let's focus specifically in on your vision for the Kansas City, Missouri School Board and its community. Uh, state officials have withheld provisional accreditation from Kansas City, Missouri School District in spite of improved academic performances. Mrs. Mansour, what should the school board do to help the school district regain, regain its accreditation? Well. 
I'm, I agree. Accreditation is um, is the biggest and most important goal we have right now. Um, if we can achieve full accreditation, that will be a signal to this community and to the state that Kansas City and this public school system is capable of educating its children. So that that's the end game right now. Uh, what can the board do with that? Well, I think the board can make sure that there's adequate financial resources lined up to support that goal. That um, the district has, that we can make sure that the district has a plan in place for how they're going to put the best teachers and the most effective principals in the schools that are struggling the most. Right now, the Kansas City uh, Public Schools uh, district personnel, they, they've they really honed in on w which schools and, and even which children are struggling. Mm -hmm. And so as a board member, it would be my responsibility to be sure that they have the resources, there is a plan in place, and that all efforts are directed toward that goal. Thank you. Mrs. Mansour, there have been several possible rescue or district solutions presented to the public. What solution is most feasible moving forward? Well, I think that the, the solution that the Kansas City Public Schools put forward is the best solution. Um, I, I don't, I support local control of our school district. Um, I do not support having a state appointed board or a state takeover of our district. I think that the solutions are here in Kansas City. And so I believe that we have the resources and the knowledge and skills in this community both within the district but in the community to solve our problem. Uh, I believe that the district is doing some of those things quite well actually. They are working with DESE, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, on what's called an RSIT process, Regional School Improvement Team process. And through that process, they're, they're monitoring student performance and achievement levels and they're using data, they're looking at, um, they're, they've involved reading specialists in many of our elementary schools, they're trying to track improvements, and I, and I feel like that process is a good one. Now, what else do I think we need? Um, as a parent, I support more site-based management. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an area that the district should explore. What schools have the right kind of leadership and staff in place, and are, if they are performing at an adequate level, are they in a position where they can have more ownership and responsibility for how they lead their schools? And then I have some other ideas I can share. Well, Ms. Mansour, we definitely want to have the time for you to share with our viewers and all of your ideas. Uh, my next question has to do with what's best for the children. Uh, sometimes when we read the newspaper, when we watch the news, we see controversy being reported, turmoil, mm -hmm. our school district is in disarray. Is what is being best, what is best for our children, is that being lost among the shuffle of controversy and turmoil? Well, definitely. You know, Kansas City's, this school district's history of turnover of superintendents has really hurt us tremendously. Um, every time we lose a superintendent, every time we lose um, many of the members of that senior educational team, we have to start all over again. We, we get knocked to our knees. And it's that kind of turmoil and then a lot of the, the sort of fighting and emotion that comes with that that, that sets our kids back, that, that hurts our kids. What really matters to children is what's happening in the classroom. Children and parents, honestly, are not paying attention to what's happening at the Board of Education building at 1211 McGee. Their energy and their concerns exist within the school building. So mm -hmm. I believe that with um, stable superintendent leadership, which we have right now with Dr. Stephen Green, uh, I believe with a focused plan for improvement and uh, bringing the community back in in a supportive role and not an adversarial role, welcoming people back to this district to bring their resources and their ideas, I think those things are the best for children. And Mrs. Mansour, you did say that you had some additional ideas in response to their possibly being a state takeover. You don't agree with 
I, a... I don't agree with the state takeover. And, and in fact, I've walked many, many blocks now as part of my school board mm -hmm. campaign in this city and talked with a few hundred people at this point. And very few, in fact, have said to me, I only would support a state takeover. Very few. It's been surprising. I expected more people to advocate for a state takeover. But the truth is most Kansas Cityans, they want to elect their school board. They want to have a voice in this school district. And I think there's a lot of community concern that if there is a state takeover, that citizens and residents of this community would lose that voice. Mm -hmm. So I do believe in local control. The, the other things that I think are, are good ideas is looking at what does it look like if you would accredit individual schools? So could we accredit individual school buildings? And then those schools that are falling beneath accreditation levels, how do we target resources and bring resources into those school buildings to really make sure they're, they're getting the help they need? How do we create sort of intervention teams that work in there for improvement? Another area of need for this district is that we're going to have a lot of teachers retiring over the next five to 10 years. Um, many of our teachers are eligible for retirement right now. Research shows very clearly that um, students in low performing schools need the best prepared and most experienced teachers. So the, one of my areas of interest is how can the board support the district to be sure that there is a plan in place, an action plan for recruiting and developing a strong pool of teacher talent. Because again, education happens in the classroom, happens in the building. That's where all the action is. I know the community focuses on the Board of Education. I know they focus on the superintendent many times, but the truth is, we're, the real work is inside of our schools. You mentioned the computer, uh, the community, Mrs. Mansell, and let's mm -hmm. let's talk about the community for a, a minute. How important is it for the school board to reach outside of the school board meeting walls and work with teachers, parents, uh, business leaders, people who are actually inside the Kansas City community uh, to um, have successful results? Well, it's very important. It, it's really, in my mind, it's one of the jobs of a good school board. Um, a good school board sets large goals. It kind of sets a vision for what the school district should be doing. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that vision has to be described the kind of educated young people that we believe and want the school district to produce. Uh, and, and when the district, when the board sets that vision and those goals, we have to reflect the interests and desires and the values of our community. So one of the responsibilities of a school board is to be an ambassador for the school district. It's to go out into the community and listen to the, the concerns and desires of the community, bring that back in and and put that into action you know, in the educational efforts that the district undertakes. I think that the board has lots of opportunities, in fact, to get out of the, the walls of 1211 McGee Street. I mean, you remember, I'm a parent, still a parent in this district. So I know what it feels like to be a parent and to feel that it's hard to interact with, with people in central administration or in the school board. It can be overwhelming for a lot of parents. Mm -hmm. It can be kind of scary. And to ask us as parents to always go down to the school board building to make our appeals and ask for help, that's a very disempowering. So I think there, there are a number of things that the school board can do. The school board can move meetings outside of 1211 McGee several times a year. Mm -hmm. They could hold board meetings around the city in various locations. Mm -hmm. They could, they could set up their own kinds of conversations. Dr. Green created something called On the Scene with Green. Mm -hmm. I love that concept. There would be nothing to prevent the school board for, from imitating that idea. So I, I think there are many ways that our board can get out and listen to the voices of people, really hear what parents and families are mm -hmm. saying, and then to um, bring that information back. What other ways will you work with school board members if you are elected, Ms. Mansour? 
Well, you know, I, I've worked in the nonprofit sector for 25 years, so I've seen a lot of boards of directors. Mm -hmm. And I, I know what a good board looks like, and I know what happens if a board um, gets off track. You know, a school board, it's a collection of individuals with different ideas, different life experiences, different professional backgrounds, but it's in, and that's wonderful. You, you want that rich diversity on that board of ideas, uh, life conditions, uh, knowledge. That is important to have. You have to have a lot of dialogue. You need to have vigorous debate. You need to have a lot of sharing and, and thinking and analyzing. But in the end, you work together as a team. You work together as a team. So t to be as a good board, and for me as a board member, I want to be part of that team. I want to bring my ideas forward. I want to contribute to that dialogue. And then I want to work with this with a group of eight other individuals to carry forward improvements in the Kansas City Public Schools. Excellent, excellent. I have one more question and then I'm going to give you the opportunity to open the floor up for final okay. words. Okay. Give our viewers your website address where they can contact you. Uh, you have children, Ms. Mansour, who have graduated from Kansas City Public Schools. One is currently enrolled. Can you assess the job the current school board is doing and what challenges and successes have your children faced as KCMO school district products? Well, you know, I think my children actually have done really well. I think sometimes the challenges are families experience challenges. I mean, I my children have had great educational experiences in this district and a lot of opportunity in the district. And um, the two of my children who've graduated, they they were ready for college. They were successful in college. Um, they have a they had a wonderful education, so I, in the end, I have no complaints about that. Sometimes I think it's, a, it's really hard to be a parent in this district because the district isn't always customer friendly. You know, in the old days, they didn't, they didn't make it easy for you to enroll your child. Um, they made it hard for you to, uh, they still do sort of make it hard for you to get your answers and concerns heard. Um, sometimes they're not friendly and they're not welcoming. Um, sometimes schools are not welcoming. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that it's, we lose families sometimes because the children are struggling, but so often we lose families in this district because the families feel that they don't have a voice, they are not treated well, mm -hmm. and they have no way to get to the answers. Mm -hmm. So I think the other question you had was how would I assess the school board? You know, I think this school board has done a, a pretty good job. I mean, over 19 years, I've seen a lot of school boards. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of turmoil on school boards. I've seen fights. I've seen people walk off the stage. I've seen chairs tipped over and wow. hands slammed on the table. So, wow. you know, this is a school board meeting. Yeah, yes, on school board members. So over 19 years, our school board has really grown and developed at this point. And truly, we've seen that change over the last six to eight years. The group of people who are serving on the school board right now, they are courteous with each other. They're civil. They are respectful. Um, are they perfect? No, you know, because we're all human beings. So, uh, but I think that they've done a reasonably good job. Three years ago, Superintendent John Covington walked out on this school district and walked out on this community very, very abruptly. And he took many of his senior leadership team with him. It, it sort of knocked every, the wind out of everyone's sails for a moment. It was, it was unbelievably surprising, not just to us as family members or the district, but also to the business and civic community and others who thought that he was committed to stay. Mm -hmm. You know, I give credit to the school board because they held things together. They um, they didn't fight with each other. They they found an interim superintendent who is now our permanent superintendent, Dr. Stephen Green, Absolutely. and they kept they kept the ship afloat uh, when uh, when there was a lot of emotion in this community. Do I think there's more work to be done to strengthen the school board? Absolutely, mm -hmm. and. Of course, I want to be a part of that. 
Well, we thank you, Ms. Mansour. Do you have any final words? Well, thank you for letting me come and talk with you all today. Uh, I hope you will vote on Tuesday, April 8th. I think that it is voting is one of the best ways that families can support education in this community. Whether you have children in the district now or if if you're retired or you, you're not yet of have children in your lives at this point, public education and the Kansas City Public Schools really affects the quality of our community. So it is absolutely important that everyone vote on the 8th. I also hope you'll learn a little bit about me. And I have a website, which is www.patty, P-A-T-T-I-E, patty for kcschoolscom So it's patty, P-A-T-T-I-E, F-O-R, K-C, schools.com. So welcome your questions through my website and um, contact information is there. Again, I hope you will look at that and, and please vote on Tuesday, April 8th. Thank you, Ms. Mansour. We are pleased to have you here today. Thank we you. want to tell our What's Up Kansas City viewers to check out all of the Kansas City School Board school candidates online at www.whatsupkansascity.net. I'm your host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell, and remember the sky's the limit. Aim high. If you shoot for the moon and you miss, at the very least, you would have landed among the stars. Thank you. Take care. Until next time. Thank you.